and welcome to Mediumship Matters with me, Hannah McIntyre. How are you doing? I'm going to start doing a few sort of troubleshooting episodes to talk you guys through some of the things that I'm seeing in my students that people are contacting me about. So now is a great time to email in with anything that is making you stuck in your development to help you move forward. And today I want to talk about how to how to know the information that you are getting is coming from spirit because I think this is a massive problem and a massive problem because the only way to know that what you are getting from spirit is from spirit or psychically, the only way to know that you are right is to be doing a reading for somebody. But how do you feel ready to do a reading for somebody when you don't know if it's you or spirit and we just cycle around in that problem. So the first thing that you've got to do is you've got to stop that cycle and so there's an acceptance here that has to come that you are going to have to read for other people before you feel ready, before it feels comfortable and I think so many people find that bit so difficult, so limiting. So what I would suggest is you need to understand the mechanics of mediumship, how it works. And then what you really want to be doing is practicing almost straight away. Now you can read for yourself, of course, but of course you're always going to be limited by the fact that you know yourself. It's a bit of a pain. So you really want to be way before you feel like you're ready, way before you feel like you can, connecting with other people to practice. And that, of course, is something that you're going to be, have to be very brave for. It is something that's going to trigger you. It is something that's going to make you feel like vomiting. That's a fact. But it really is the only way to know that you're doing it. The only way to know that you're doing it is to sit in front of somebody and say, I feel like you're worried about your son, and then say, I am worried about my son. Or for you to say, I've got your grandmother here, and she feels like she's really bossy, and for them to say, my grandmother was really bossy. And this is the problem. So many of us wait to feel like we know that it's spirit before we start working with other people that we never start developing. We just stay in stasis. So first of all, let's talk about practice readings. If you are doing a practice reading, then you should be accepting and your sitter should be accepting that it's maybe not going to change somebody's life. I think we, we have this kind of idea when we want to go do practice sittings that they have to be of a standard of a medium that is charging. They don't. And let's be really clear about that. They, they, nobody should be expecting that. Your sitter shouldn't be expecting that. And you shouldn't be expecting that of yourself. You will fumble. You will make stuff up. Your brain will get in the way. That's the journey. So you have to accept, and I know I mentioned this in my book, but you have to accept that at the beginning, it is more you than spirit. And the only way to get it to be more spirit than you is to practice. The only way to practice is to put yourself in the vulnerability of sitting in front of somebody. And I think that that just isn't talked about enough. I think we all on some level think that everybody else has had some sort of awakening where they know that it's spirit. We don't. I never did. I felt like I was making things up. 
and then when it was right I was almost so shocked that I would tell myself it was a lucky guess and then when it happened again I would think well, well that was two lucky guesses but maybe that's really generic and then and then and then and all of a sudden I started to realize that I did manage to do it at least once and then I started to manage to do it twice and then I started to allow myself to believe that I did have the capacity for this but if you don't allow yourself to sit with somebody and actually go through the process you're never going to prove to yourself that you can do it now I know that sometimes uh, sitting in front of somebody it can go wrong um, it can they cannot recognize the spirit that you're speaking to um, they can say no to things even though you're feeling them really strongly but that is the journey the journey is getting it wrong to get it right and just like if you were doing anything else I don't know what it is about mediumship oh sorry my dog's wading in I don't know what it is about mediumship where we expect everything to be perfect straight away everything to be right straight away in any other vocation like this you would expect yourself to get things wrong you don't see painters painting their first painting and putting it in an art gallery you don't see singers hitting every note the first time that they sing with no nothing they can improve on so why is it when we do mediumship we expect ourselves to be perfect straight away. Bricklayers, you don't build a beautiful, ornate, perfect wall on your first go bricklaying. But when it's mediumship, we expect ourselves to be perfect. And if you're like me with a healthy dose of perfectionism, I'm already triggered that my dog is barking on my podcast, but I'm running out of time and I wanted to get this recorded. So it's, it's, always going to be a trigger I am um, when I did art GCSE I hated it because what I could see in my head was so much better than what I had the ability to put down on paper and I think that mediumship is a bit like that to be honest you have to be accepting with being good enough with where you are if you are right at the beginning of your journey, you are a beginner. Allow yourself to be a beginner. Allow yourself to get things wrong. Allow yourself to make things up. That's the journey. And it's so important to give yourself that grace because I think we lose a lot of mediums and I think a lot of mediums don't progress because they're unwilling to be in that space. I can remember when I really wanted to do evidential mediumship and I'd been working with spirit guides for about eight years and I kept telling myself that if I was supposed to do evidential mediumship it would have happened naturally and holding myself in stasis and I did that for a few years and I need you guys to understand that because I think one of my biggest regrets really is the time that I wasted waiting for permission to do the thing that I wanted to do and I meet so many people on this journey who have given up because they didn't feel like they were progressing or feel like they are stuck and frustrated and they are blaming it on spirit almost they're feeling like spirit didn't want them on the team like they um weren't good enough like they're being rejected by the cosmic powers that be and they're not but you have to own the, the bit of you that is an intrinsic part of mediumship you have to you have to be in a space of knowing that if you want to move forward and you want to progress that's on you it's you that has to book in practice sitters. It's you that has to be brave and have that vulnerability. Spirit can't do that for you. They don't feel dis disconnected from us. We feel disconnected from them. And so in order to make that connection, you have to force that connection. 
In order to surrender to spirit, you have to have forced it enough to trust it. And so it is a real yin-yang of energy when you are unfolding to spirit because you want to feel ready, but you'll never feel ready until you actually do it. You'll want to feel that spirit are with you, but you'll never feel like spirit are with you until you've proven evidentially to yourself, not your sitters, that spirit are there. You will never get that momentum to move forward in your mediumship unless you create it. And there's so many people just sitting in stasis, so many of you. And here's the irony, the people that don't sit in stasis, the people that can push through with ease, are normally the people that need to do more inner work more integration and be present with themselves and why they want to be a medium and what the journey's for and what it's about. And that I find, again, one of the great ironies of this development journey is that you can have somebody in a group who is uber confident and powering out all of this stuff and everybody in the room will be going oh no I can't do it like that oh my goodness they've got so much information but actually <laughs> they're not working with spirit they're just very good at talking and it it's the problem so if you're listening to this and you are you've been caught in that rut and you're recognizing now that perhaps it is time to get out there and practice, then get out there and practice. You must. You really, really must. And I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It's not comfortable. It is difficult. You will feel ridiculous. Your imposter syndrome will be shouting at you that you can't do this and everybody hates you and it's an embarrassment, but you have to do it anyway because that is where the growth is and so if you it's a bit like running if you don't start jogging you'll never start jogging you can just walk forever you need to start the process even if it's 30 seconds you need to start to be able to do it lifting weights if you want to lift weights if you want to lift five kilograms you need to start with one kilogram and that is where so many people are just in stasis i have met people who've been on spiritual development journeys for decades and still don't really believe that they can do this. And the reason that they don't really believe that they can do this is because they are not consistently putting themselves in the vulnerable situation of reading for other people and proving they can do this. Tough, right? Difficult. Now, there's a couple of tips that I have to give you if you are working on your belief. And one of them I've already said, but I'm going to say it again because it's so important. You will get things wrong. You will make things up. Deal with it. Accept that. Make peace with it. And really sit, I think, with the worst case scenario when you're going to go and read uh, with other people. The worst thing that's going to happen is you're going to get a spirit through that nobody can recognise. That doesn't mean that you're wrong, but we'll talk about that in another episode. But that's the worst thing that's going to happen. The worst thing that's going to happen is you will say to somebody, I feel like you're worried about your son. And they will say, I haven't got a son. And you will go, oh, it's not the end of the world. It's it's a bit embarrassing. It's a little bit awkward. But if you don't judge yourself and hold yourself to a ridiculous level, it's really not that bad. You are not a brain surgeon operating on newborns. It's not a life or death situation. And in honesty, if you are doing practice readings and you're reading for somebody who's in desperate need or wants a desperate communication, I would suggest that you don't read for them. You back away. I know that sounds harsh, but I've had to say this in groups before. If you have, if you are working with somebody in evidential mediumship, for example, and they, you say to them, who do you want to hear from? And they say, 
my son, he took his own life and I've not heard from him yet. That's too much pressure for a beginner. There's too much pressure. That's a lot of pressure for an accomplished seasoned medium. It is too much pressure. If you sit down and you say, I'm going to pull you some cards, have you got any questions? And they say, I want to know if I should leave my husband. That's too much pressure. Those are not the people you want to be working with. You want to work with people where there isn't really that need. The spirit world has already been proven to them. They're already a believer. They're already, they have already had the connection that has transformed their life. And now they want to help you to be able to have that connection for other people and that is a different but important point now if you are listening to this and going i'm just not ready i'm just not ready there is one thing that i think you can do that will help you to prove to yourself that you're doing stuff which is to write things down now full disclosure I've never done that. I'm too lazy. Um, but I know people that have. And one of my students who used to sit in my circle was really good at keeping records. Every time she pulled cards or channeled anything, she would write it down. And I remember one day uh, we didn't have an even number of students. So I worked with her and it was really lovely energy. She always had brilliant energy, fantastic person. And, uh, I was pulling cards and reading for her. And as I gave her her message, she said, that's really familiar to me. I'm sure I've already heard that. And we went, oh, interesting. And then a bit later, she messaged me and she had essentially written down the message that I gave her nearly word for word two months prior. And this is where it gets really interesting. When she had channeled that message, she had drawn a picture next to it. And it was just like this funny shape. She didn't know what it meant. It was the earrings I was wearing at the moment I gave that message to her. If she hadn't kept records, if she hadn't written stuff down, we wouldn't have had a record of that. We wouldn't have had that as an evidential moment. And it was amazing. But in honesty, I'm I'm just too lazy. I've never written anything down. So I had to go straight into reading for other people. But if you really are, I just can't, I just can't, then keeping a written record really does help with feeling into the energy and being specific because it's just for you. So there's no fear. You don't have to water it down. And then um, seeing what comes up, seeing if you were right, seeing if it was correct and working in that. But ultimately, of course, you want to be able to do it in the moment. You want to be able to read for other people. You want to be a medium. That's why you're doing the journey or at least have mediumistic abilities. And that to do that, you have to go through that process. One thing that I ask of you all just to finish this episode is milk the things you get right until they are a husk. I think we all have a tendency to focus on the things we got wrong, the things that were a bit meh, the things that we didn't feel comfortable with, bollocks to that. Push those things to one side, allow yourself the grace of learning, but look at what you did well. If you got a yes, that's bloody amazing. Sit with it, feel it, send thanks out for it, send thanks to yourself, celebrate your achievement because that is incredible. I feel like that is the most, the most important thing, the most valuable thing is to not allow your human to only focus on the nose, but to really sit in the wonder and the magnitude of the yeses. And it will feel unnatural and you will resist it and you will fight it and you won't like it and that's okay. But sit with it anyway, fully absorb it. I really hope that this has given you the kick up the bum, probably, that you need to make you 
start doing the work and practicing and getting out there because we are in it's like a funnel of we've got loads of people that have developed and then they've just they're just stuck we've got a bottleneck there and we need people working we have not got enough evidential mediums we have not got enough people doing the work doing the connections we're in desperate desperate need and so I think part of the problem there is that we've lost nearly a whole generation of developing mediums because no one is talking about the fact that you have to just start when you don't feel ready and at the beginning it will be more you than spirit but that's how it's supposed to be it's a process so please please give it a go find a group to learn in practice with other developing mediums it's a mixed bag no doubt but start that journey start that practice keep picking yourself up dusting yourself off and getting back on the horse it is the only way as i said at the beginning please let me know any questions for your development that you have thoughts on this one i love to hear from you all I know I've got an inbox full of questions and I will be getting through them as soon as I can. Have a fantastic day and be brave. Viva!